is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. It's not just a word. Some of y'all heads up in the cloud. I'ma bring y'all back to earth. It's black, black, the bird. Y'all talking about out your mouth. I'm not concerned. Cause y'all got to learn. It's y'all turned like Detroit Red. When his head had an ultra burn. The long walk I burn. Your bare heels so the on your boots. The game camouflage like army suits. But I can see it more clear. Cause I came with the coop in here. Ring the alarm and form the troops. Send them out into the world. Go to war on the flu. Out to eye with the enemy you sworn to shoot. Now I'm coming at your neck. Sick of hearing something wrong. With me on the truth, when the chief just way too smart to question the enemy, the brothers of a dark complexion, the governments of the world is shark infested. They have the own weaponry like shark and Heston, man. Look, it gets low, man. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about. Talking Heads with Naughty is sponsored by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, the Delta Bank Bahamas, Fine Threads, John's Department Store, J.S. Johnson, Joker's Wild, KFC, Laugh Fest, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, and Tropical Gyros. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, the Wednesday edition, the hump day edition is on. Your boy, Naughty in your company, right up until 6 p.m. tonight. And uh, we got lots to talk about, lots to talk about, so we got to jump right in on this one. Uh, first and foremost, you know, hope you had a great day. You're heading home, we're going to make that work run, that school run, nothing but fun. I'm trying to maintain you, sustain you, and entertain you on the ride home. And that's what I'm going to try to do again today, but, but lots to talk about, especially coming out of Zoom. We're going to get to that in a second. I'm going to have some guests in the studio with me. But, uh, you know, I, I like to make your mind right. I like to know that we are, uh, we're all on the same page. I'm all, you know, in a good pla- place, in a good space. So leave your work, stress at work. I got you on the ride at home, all right? And how we start that off? The brain teaser. The mind-bending brain teaser. You know how to chime in? 323-6232. 325-4316. 325-4259. Phone lines are open. Text lines powered by BTC, 422-GR96, 422-4796. Stream live and take us wherever you want to go, guardiantalkradio.com. That's guardiantalkradio.com. Cable channel 969, BTC flow channel 612. All right. Now you're playing today for registration for the big drawing next week for that platinum Laugh Fest experience over there at Fusion Superplex. Friday and Saturday night, you got Laugh Fest 2022. One show Friday, 9 p.m., two shows Saturday, 7.30 and 9.30. All right? Tickets available at the box office at Fusion for the general, 60 for the VIP. Headliner, fresh off tour with uh, D.L. Hewley, Bodacious. Feature comedian, Cisco Duran. And, of course, you, know, you got the 242 Funniest, Dash Quay, BJ, Shadfer, all hosted by yours. Truly funny show from start to finish. So definitely take advantage of that uh, you know, next weekend, going into the August holiday Monday weekend, come get your laugh on at Laugh Fest 2022, the 15th annual. All right? Pick up the Wise Guy Entertainment, the Beam Agency, and Tropical Gyro together and making it happen for you. And it's all powered by the Platinum Sponsors, John Shoes, and KFC Nassau. All right? And don't forget to shop at all those great uh, locations. You actually win a Laugh Fest a Platinum experience as well from KFC, from John's, and from Tropical Gyros. But, like I said, your plan right here, right now, today to get registered for next week because I'm giving you a shot for you and five of your friends to go get your laugh on at Laugh Fest with the Platinum Experience. All right, we're going to hook it up for you. All right, all you got to do is answer my brain tease and that's a good one today too. You guys should get this right away, okay? Recent survey. 
of 100 behemoths, 50 men, 50 women. And this had to be millennials, I swear. Survey revealed that 44% find this annoying when texting. What is it? That is your mind-bending brain teaser. We have 100 behemoths, 50 men, 50 women. 44% said that they are annoyed by this when texting. They find this to be very annoying when texting. What is it? That's your mind-bending brain teaser. You got between now and the top of the news in 5 o'clock hour to get your answers in. All right? All right. And you know how to get your answers in. Ready, steady, go. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, buddy, this is Al. Is it driving? No. Turn your radio down there for me, Al. Though you, 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 you might buck up with that feedback. No, not, not, uh, not driving, all right? Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, not a text correction. No, not text correction. That is annoying, but that ain't it. That ain't it. Think about it. Call me back. All right. Let's jump out into the headliners right now. Who are us making headlines in the 242? All brought to you, of course, by Fine Threads. And don't forget, new arrivals in stock right now at both Fine Thread locations, Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, the flagship store, and the Southwest Shop. Be sure to check them out today. And don't forget, if you buy one denim combo, one denim outfit, you buy your denim jeans or your denim top and bottom, you're going to get the next one equal or lesser value absolutely free. You get a men's uh, suit or a men's suit package. You're going to get a boy's suit package for 50% off. Both Fine Thread locations. Check them out online, finethreads.com. And remember, Fine Threads for the man with good taste. Be sure to check them out today. All right, and joining me right now, because today is a little, little different, because we got lots of headlines popping. There was one in particular that screams out loud across the pages of the Nassau Guardian. Cooper says 30,000 gallons of oil spilled in Exuma waters. Now you know how I feel about oil. And I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. We keep playing around with oil, whether it's oil drilling or the usage of oil as, as a source of fuel. We saw that long ago, long time. This is the LNG option, which is cleaner and safer. My God, we're 30,000 gallons. Now, to help me better break all of this down, you know I had to call in my friends. So I have uh, Casuarina uh, McKinney, the executive director of Brief. And I also have, joining me, Mr. Chris Wilkie from the Waterkeeper Alliance. All right, I want to welcome both of them to the show. We got both of them on, Mr. Producer. Casuarina, Chris, are you guys there? It's right here. Thank you so much, Nodi, for having me. I just got to make sure my producer here today. My producer looked like, like, like some oil spilled in the studio. Be good now? Are you straight? All right. So, you guys. I think he might be having his fish snack. Yeah, yeah but he better enjoy that fish now. Oil fish, not oil fish, right? Well, he better enjoy it now because anything coming from that thing could be oil fish. I'm telling you. And I hate to say it, but here we are. And I, I didn't want us to have to talk on these kind of terms. I'm glad to know both of you are doing well. And thank you for coming in on such short notice. And I appreciate you for that. But we got to talk about our oil spill. 30,000 gallons. And I don't want people to really dismiss this. This is not a small oil spill. 30,000 gallons is a lot of oil. Yeah. So um, this is definitely not a small, small spill. We're still not entirely sure what it is. Certainly some petroleum products. Um, and I think what a lot of people don't realize is it's actually the impacts that you can't see that are often worse than the impacts that you can see, um, particularly impacts to early life stages of the things that we really, you know, all the grouper, the conch, the crawfish, they all have little tiny larval stages. And those are the stages that in life that are most vulnerable to the negative impacts from petroleum pollution. And then, obviously, from petroleum pollution, the, the, the after effects, because it, it, it takes about really 10 to 12 years to really clean up after a spill, correct? Or maybe even more. It depends on the size of the spill, but you're absolutely right, uh, particularly if there's crude oil involved. Um, it takes decades to, uh, to recover. They're recovering after the BP oil disaster there, and um, 
Uh, Alaska, Prince William Sound is still recovering from the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill. Now, those were into the millions of gallons. That's not what's being discussed here. But um, the important thing to watch is the is how this story unfolds and how the information gets out there. Because if the initial estimate is 30,000 gallons, um, it'll be interesting to see where that ends up uh, based on you know how much fuel was lost and what people are comfortable saying. Now, when we hear reports that the oil has been contained in the bay at the area of the Exuma Sailing Club, some people might look at that and say, oh, they got to contain, they'll clean it up. But that's not really a good thing, is it, to have it contained there? Because now that whole bay is going to really be affected, correct? Absolutely. That, um, I, And all I have to go on is the pictures that have been in the media and um, – uh, and you know what you can see, it, it does look like they got a boom across the mouth of that bay, um, which is preventing some of that oil spill from spreading. Uh, you don't see much oil on the outside of that boom, but it could be slipping under the boom. Uh, and there already could be some that is mo mobilized that is going elsewhere. But uh, it looks like they did the right thing by closing it off. That is certainly... Um, uh, a, a good first step. They would have had to have that boom standing by uh, to get that to happen so quickly. Uh, so that's probably a good thing, but it, it is bad for that bay. Uh, that bay is going to see um, uh, impacts for, for years as a result of this. Um, and then the other thing I'd just like to mention for anyone who might be going to that site, I saw some videos. I didn't see anybody wearing personal protective equipment. I didn't see gloves. I didn't see masks, respirators. Um, people need to be protecting themselves. Um, uh, it, you know, it's oil is in the water. It's easy to just uh, want to get into full response mode, uh, but it's not worth sacrificing your personal health. Uh, even if you're onshore covering it for the media, if you can smell that odor, that is, that is poison. That, that is uh, messing with your, your lungs. It is messing with, uh, it, is there neurotoxins in that? Um, uh, first responders who are trained in oil spill response, they don't go into a hot zone like that unless they're wearing their protective gear. Um, so that, that is something that, that people need to be aware of. Now, obviously the bay was collateral damage at the moment, but obviously for the bigger picture, like you said, if it doesn't escape the boom and get into, you know, larger areas of ocean, that, that may be the good thing. The bay is obviously going to suffer, but where do we go from here as far as with the bay goes, Chris? I mean, how, how do we get to treating and, and getting the bay into recovery? Because obviously it's taking the brunt of and all if of I this. Could, if I could just jump in quickly. Uh, of I course, Jasmine. Not the bay with the Exuma Sailing Club in it. It is the bay one bay south. So just to clarify that. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned because Exuma is, of course, the sailing capital oh, of yes. the Bahamas. And um, just, just wanting to clarify that. And, of course, the waters of Exuma are famous for um, to be some of the most beautiful in the world. And um, we want to make sure that those areas are protected. Now, Kajarina, um, you said it's the base south of the of the sailing club, correct? Because I, I, I definitely want to clarify that because in, 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 in the dailies, the DPM was quoted as saying it was uh, contained in the bay in the area of the Exuma Sailing Club. So basically, it's the bay south of the Exuma Sailing Club, correct? That's correct. Because like, like I said, I, I understand, you know, where you're coming from. I got a lot of people here in New Providence freaking themselves out right now. I'm on my boots down there in Exuma. Hold on. So I don't want none of them to freak out yeah, today. and everybody loves Exuma. I mean, it really is one of the most special places Exuma's in the world. Exuma's sweet for real. Yeah, you are, you are, Exuma you are and, and it's and sweet. Visitors love Exuma, too. It's sweet. Been there several times to cover bonefish back in the day early in my career, and I definitely had a great time in Exuma, so I, I know why people love it so much. Now, for both of you, or both of you can answer this, but like, like I said, back to the question I just had, where do we go in getting the bay into recovery? As far as, you know, long term, because obviously we can't just leave it sitting there. We, we have to clean it up. We have to, to, to get to, to work. Yeah, Kasri, do you want to speak to impacts to coral and things like that? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so there are immediate impacts, um, and uh, particularly to sensitive animals like corals. 
um, and, and fish and other marine life. Um, we've certainly seen impacts of um, oil pollution out at Clifton for many, many years. Um, it is much better now than it was. Uh, and we are seeing things come back. So nature has a wonderful way of uh, restoring, um, but there still are likely to be long-term impacts that um, we may not even be able to see um, at, a, at a glance, um, but that do need to be properly monitored and, um, and remediated. Um, there's still ongoing issues from Equinor in Grand Bahama. I was just going to say I... oil spill from, <laughs> from Hurricane Dorian. Um, lots of concerns there um, from officials in Grand Bahama um, wanting to make sure that that cleanup happens. It started, but it didn't ever ever get completely resolved. Um, so we want to make that the that there are proper cleanup um, plans in place and that they are taken to completion. Okay, now here's. We talked about the Aquanoa situation. And you know, if, if, if in five seconds, Joe Darvillis could call in to bring me up the snuff on that. Cause you know, that's, he got, he got, he, that's his, that's his thing right there. He, he's not going to let that go until that's, that's definitely cleaned up and, and done properly. My biggest fear, are we going to have another Aquanoa kind of situation with this hanging over our heads? Because I heard the minister of uh, works, uh, minister Sears say today that, you know, the, the private entities that deal with this are, are, have been engaged. Well, who are the private entities? What are their qualifications and so on and so forth? I mean, we need to know who's cleaning this up. And how they're cleaning it up. Yeah, because absolutely. Because it has to be done. And I think moments like this really are trigger moments for us to say, hang on, let's take a step back. You know, what really makes sense for our country? Um, we're setting ourselves for more and more of these kinds of impacts. I'm from Eleuthera. We had a spill a couple of years ago of 70,000 gallons of fuel going to BPL that ended up in Rock Sound. Um, these are issues that are not going to go away until we take that brave leap and say, hang on, <laughs> we're the country that needs to be powered by renewables. Thank we you. have incredible sun, incredible wind, so many opportunities here to have energy security, to have reduced energy costs. Um, we really need to step back and say, hang on, Burning this old fossil fuel and polluting our world is not the way we want to go. We want to go in the direction of renewable energy. So it's moments like this that we need to use as a turning point and say, hang on, this is the future. This is why we need renewable energy. All right, well, this is a topic that is definitely buzzing, and we're going to get into the buzz right now. All brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. Got a couple of callers on the line. Let's go to the line right now. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hi, this is Desi. Hey, how you doing, Desi? I'm great, thank you. Um, uh, my answer is um, long voice note. No, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Think about it and call me back. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, who's this? Yeah, good afternoon, Naughty. Hey, what's going on? Good afternoon to your brilliant guest. You know, I call in the chime, and of course I'm vexed, right? Welcome, 52. I know. Tell me how you yeah. feel, it, man. That's my hometown, but I got a joke for you. Uh, the citizens, yeah, we need a Joe Darville playing. That's the only person they trust different from these two people on the ground to be down there, right? I'm not into the photo ops and the psyops, right? Contain what? First of all, oil and water is miscible. That means it's, it's the oil emulsifies, right? What, what, what I saw from the, aquino, the spill in the Gulf, the, the, the oil uh, emulsified and formed a big plume over a mile long, and it submerged itself underneath the water. And so they're using surfactants and, and displacements and all of these chem harmful chemicals, right? And it should be known that, you know, not because, you know, mankind's greatest problem, as sophisticated as we think we are, is getting rid of waste from industrial to human waste. That's one of our greatest problems. They know it. Nuclear waste. And so what happens now is the, 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 this, something, there's something called persistent organic pollutants. So your guests, was, they were stressing that, but they just wanted to emphasize it. So that means that the, 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 the organic chemicals, they are persistent. They don't just go away because you say you clean it up. And the fact that, well, I can, I can use your joke. I don't need any oil fish, right? I, I like boil fish. Boil fish, not oil yeah. fish. Let them yeah. know so, if so, do. So the fish in Exuma could swim here too. So I am a part of this, uh, this chain of islands. You understand what I'm saying? And Correct. I'm very angry because I listen to your guests. You know, we should have been a move away from this paradigm. But the fact remains that we would like to see the litigation who's held responsible because, not because somebody who owned the oil company in power and cool with their men. The, the environmental uh, fines can't come in because this is ridiculous. Obviously, an investigation has, is, is, is needed quickly. And 
and I trust Joe Darwin on the ground. So they say it's 30,000 gallons. Let's see the logbook. Let's see everything. Have a good day. All right, 52. Yeah. Thanks for chiming in. And you guys have been officially endorsed by 52. That, that is our resident research <laughs> scientist here on Talking Heads. So, you know, you got two thumbs up from 52, which is a good thing. But well, I, I, as you can see, a lot of... He's on about this person. But I, as you can see, that we, is certainly we, got a lot of, we got a lot of Bahamians that are now, you know, taking this seriously and doing their own research and are very passionate about it. And, you know, a lot of us are up in arms here today with this whole situation because we're more worried, like, where do we go from here? Obviously, it affects the food chain. Obviously, it affects the, 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 the new life in our coral reefs, like you were talking about, Casuarina. And then the long-term effects, like, like Chris was talking about. So at the end of the day, we got a boo-boo on our hands, a big, a big oily boo-boo, and we got to clean it up. Yeah, and the next uh, few hours are going to be critical uh, because that oil is relatively contained at this point, at least by the pictures that we saw. There may be something else somewhere else that wasn't shown in that picture. Um, this is the time they should have the equipment there to absorb that oil as much as they can uh, because it is going to start emulsifying. It's going to start going beneath the surface um, uh when a certain amount of it will evaporate, um, but with diesel oil, at least 30% of it actually goes into the water and remains. And that's the heavier constituents that provide uh, the long-term uh, impacts. One thing they should not be doing at this point, in my opinion, is using any dispersants. Um, this is the exact opposite situation when you'd want to use a dispersant, if ever. And, um, and I stress that highly because the dispersants actually make the oil more toxic. It makes it so it can impact the coral, it can impact people, it can impact the fish even more. Um, this oil, at least by the picture, is relatively well contained. This is the time when you absorb it, you soak it up, you skim it. Um, if they throw a dispersant on there, it's going to make it look a lot better for the photos, but it's going to be because the oil is in the water. And then, and that would have a much longer effect um, on the fish. You might as well pull the boom at that point because it's going right under the boom if right. you put any dispersant on it. Well, I want to thank both of you for chiming in. I know you're very busy, but um, I, I know we got to be in touch over the next couple of days just to keep following up on this. So I appreciate you chiming in, Chris. And Casuarina, I appreciate you chiming in as well. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Nori. No problem, man. Thank you both Thanks for chiming so in. We're going to take a quick break now. On the flip side of the break, we'll get into the global warming. We're seeing up the, uh, the planet in 60 seconds. The last all brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. And uh, my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break, all on the flip side of the break. And we may have Joe Davo on that Dunkin' Donuts coffee break coming up on the flip side. So keep it right where you got it. It's all coming at you right here on the flip side of the break on Talking Heads. Don't touch it. Get ready for more iced coffee temptations at Dunkin'. More delectable aromas and more exciting flavors so you can get more refreshment from every cup. Enjoy the flavors of butter roasted pecans and sweet cream combined with Dunkin' Original Blend Iced Coffee. Or try our cake batter signature latte combining smooth, rich espresso with a spoon-licking good cake batter flavor topped with whipped cream, mocha drizzle, and rainbow sprinkles for a party in every cup. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Refined style with elegant taste Then fine threads is your place If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist Then fine threads is your place If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go Like you're supposed to be in a video Wanna step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place Refined style with elegant taste Then fine threads is your place Is your place Is your place Naughty Johnny's Restaurant can only be described as the experience you want to recreate again and again and again. Their motto is simple food done well. You're welcome into their home at Naughty Johnny's where you can dine on crack conk, conk fritters, and other Bahamian favorites. There's also an international flair that's guaranteed to offer something for everyone. Enjoy a good meal and listen to a live band on their patio Friday and Saturday night or brunch on Saturday and Sunday only at Naughty Johnny's Restaurant in the Old Town Plaza, Old Fort. They're open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Naughty John. What the We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Spencer Plan. Island game. Keep you with it. Percy Spencer Plan. Dream big. We will help you live it. Percy Spencer Plan. Island game. We got you. Percy Spencer Plan. From the friends you can trust. It's winning. 
Winning is a must. Don't play the game, you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Game. Whether you like it hot or you enjoy being original, KFC has the only chicken sandwiches with attitude, featuring 100% extra large white meat chicken fillets for 100% flavor. Enjoy the famous flavor of KFC 11 herbs and spices in the KFC Original Recipe Burger, or take the heat up a notch with a spicy fillet with our KFC Kentucky Deluxe Sandwich. And for a limited time, enjoy your favorite sandwich with fries for only $7. That's how it's done. KFC Nassau, it's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Talking Ads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. The Wednesday edition continues right here, right now. And time for me to uh, get up into my global warming. We're seating up the planet in 60 seconds or less. All brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. And, of course, you know, uh, in my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break today, I'm going to be joined by uh, Mr. Joseph Darvel. So, you know, I'm going to talk with him and my good friend from Rice, Bahamas. And, you know, we, we can talk, we can talk, we can talk. You know, me and Uncle Joe, we, we got a party. You know, it's always, but I, I could not do the show and not have uh, Joseph Darvin on. Right? And I appreciate Kasherine McKinney from Brief and all, obviously uh, Chris Wilkie from uh, Waterkeepers for, for chiming in with me. Greatly appreciated. So we'll be talking with uh, Joe in one second. Just let me get through the KFC uh, Global Warming. And once I get through that, we'll get up into my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break and, and have that great conversation with Mr. Joe Darvel. But uh, don't forget, KFC's doing big things for you, all right? Their drive throughs are open until midnight. Open and frying until midnight. Now you have more time to satisfy those late-night cravings for KFC chicken every night of the week. Last call to get fueled by our fried chicken is midnight. KFC Nassau, finger licking good. And while you're there, try it. Be an original, all right? Enjoy being original at the KFC with the new original recipe burger. This chicken sandwich features an extra large 100% white meat original recipe filet. No shortcuts, only superior fried chicken. And that's how a chicken sandwich is supposed to be. We've done the Colonel's way at KFC. Get you one today, all right? Out and for drive through all right? And drive throughs open until midnight. And don't forget, check out your favorite KFC social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can win a Platinum Laugh Fest experience to Laugh Fest 2022, courtesy of KFC Nassau, one of the Platinum sponsors of Laugh Fest 2022. All right? So let's check out the warming real quick. We're heating up the planet in 60 seconds or less, all brought to you by KFC Nassau. All right, here we go. Chrissy Teigen is celebrating one year of sobriety. I don't believe her. Or maybe she's just drunk herself into a permanent state of looking hammered. But good for her if it is. Congratulations, as a matter of fact. Draw well done, Chrissy, if you are. Bruce Willis visited the top Fox Plaza in Los Angeles last Friday, better known as Nakatomi Plaza, in the first Die Hard movie he filmed there 34 years ago. The question is, did Bruce remember he filmed it there 34 years ago? Dwayne Johnson is Shark Week's master of ceremony. That is The Rock, of course. HBO is set to premiere a Princess Diana documentary on the 23rd death. CBS has moved Thursday's eviction episode of Big Brother, originally scheduled for 8 p.m. Uh, for, to Friday, July 22nd at 8 p.m., replacing the previously scheduled second season premiere of Secret Celebrity Renovation. Stranger Things catapults Kate Bush's running up that hill to over 100 million YouTube views. Chelsea Handler and Joe Coy have gone their separate ways just ahead of their one-year anniversary. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says he's got enough in him to last until the end of President Biden's term. Then he's retiring. Heidi Montag and Spencer Pratt are expecting a baby boy together. Dear God, they procreated. Oh, God. And finally, actor Miriam Margolis says she still hasn't forgiven Arnold Schwarzenegger for the unthinkable thing he did to her on the set of the movie End of Days. She claims he deliberately farted in her face. And then afterwards, he probably said, get to the chopper, get to the chopper now. I just put it in your face. Get to the chopper. 
I had asparagus at the buffet today. Listen to me now. Anyway, that's the wrap right there. On your global woman, let's eat the planet in 60 seconds or less. All brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. And right about now, let me get up into my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break because you know I runs on Dunkin'. And people, you definitely, definitely, definitely got to check out Dunkin'. All right? You want to beat the heat? You want to cool down? The iced coffees are back at Dunkin'. Oh, yeah. My favorite one that's back, the butter pecan. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, off the chain, good. But wait, there's more. You got to try the Dunkin' Lemonade Refreshers. They look as good as they taste, and they're going to leave you feeling renewed and refreshed. Perfect way to cool down on these hot summer days. Check out Dunkin's Lemonade Refreshers. Strawberry dragon fruit, peach passion fruit, and the new mango pineapple. All three available, and they're mixed with lemonade, and they're oh so refreshing. Waiting for you at your favorite Dunkin' location. Downtown Bay Street, Paradise Island, Palmdale. Brendan Road with the drive through East Street South with the drive through Carmichael, the newest location, and at the airport, pre-clearance and post-clearance. Let's get into my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break right now. And joining me, I got my good friend, Mr. Joseph Dovel, activist, environmentalist, teacher, lecturer, rabble-rouser, and man with a good sense of humor, my good friend. Joe, how are you, man? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Well, I, I'm kind of depressed today. Me and you both. I mean, I wish we were talking under different circumstances, but glad to no, know you're doing yeah, well for the most part. Listen, you, you know why it's so depressing? Because I just spent four magnificent days in Exuma with my grandson. You know, every every summer I uh, bring a grandson of mine uh, to the Bahamas to see one of the islands. We do uh, um, Abaco and Grand Bahama. And this year we went to, I just got back a couple of three days ago from Exuma. And one, oh my God, the beauty and the pristine environment is just absolutely phenomenal. Particularly the mangroves. I've never seen propagules that long, man. I don't know what feeds those red mangroves. They're like almost 18 feet eight and not feet long. And, you know, if we want to propagate mangroves in Grand Bahama and Abaco, we just go to Exuma and we pick those babies between now and the end of August and we can plant hundreds of thousands around. And especially and depra- especially, huh? if, if, especially if we're so keen on the carbon credit market, well, we got to you know, replenish what's making us the carbon credit money. We're about to make us the carbon credit money. Well, boy, is, isn't it something? And, you know, they are with uh, Equinor and now the spillage there in, in Exuma in Georgetown, it is uh, the, the universe is sending us specific uh, mission. Do not fool with my ocean. You know, be be sensible. And you know what I just found out from a contact in Exuma uh, that uh, the the uh, boat that brought in that fuel is a single tanker. It's not a double tanker. How could they travel well, around? Well, how can you do that? With, with, can, you're they not supposed to carry on in a single tanker. You, is, is, you, you can't, need a double tanker. Uh, or it's supposed to be transported tanker. with a double tanker. And I, I am I'm reliably informed that it's a single tanker. And if you hit something and that and that is penetrated, then the oil just gushes out. Thirty thousand gallons of oil. That that uh, if you uh, multiply that by what the price of um, gas is on on the Exuma, that runs to two hundred forty thousand dollars worth. Not not that I I am I am concerned about the worth of it thing. But the fact is, we've been sending a, a message. And my God, when I see, saw the beach that that spilled, one of the beaches that is impacted with that, it is exactly the one as I drove around that curb coming from like the dark area uh, in Georgetown, uh, my grandson looked down. He said, Papa, look at that beautiful beach. I said, I think I even see a shark there, but it was just a, a rock. And actually, I can see the rock through the oil that he thought was a shark. And so I am very much attuned to to that magnificent beauty of of Exuma. And, you know, what are we listening? Are we listening to this message from Equinor, which is still less than two-thirds cleaned up? And why is it so secret? We don't know yet. What is the compensation to our country for that catastrophic devastation of our forests and our wetlands? Uh, Listen, Naughty. I'm listening. You know, I, I, I wanted to yeah, ask no, you in, in relation to yeah. this, uh, you know, and this reminded me and it, and it stuck out in my, in my brain. And I was like, look, I got to ask Joe when I talked to him uh, and, and I know Casuarina mentioned it briefly when, when she was on just now, but we haven't really heard about the, the results and the, and the, re, the residual effects of Aquanor. It still hasn't been cleaned up in my opinion. 
I mean, there's still, you know, no, 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 be- no, no. The, the, the only environmental people would be save the bays and water keeps Bahamas. We were there. Uh, as far, I was there day two after the spillage when you couldn't even go through because right. the oil was like two feet thick on the road, going across the road. And, and it affected the, the water table, correct? Uh, pardon me? Yeah, and it went down over the wetlands, weeks of acres of wetlands in that area. Uh, but, you know, we were advised, and we, we also agreed with that particular advisory, that you could not go into the wetlands to clean it because you, you would have made it worse. Because when you mess with wetlands, you release the carbon that's, that's stored there, and it smells like stink sulfur. And so we, we, we would, and, and when that comes to the surface, it floats in the water. See, a lot of people don't know about the, my, my, the m- magic of this planet. That, that's what killed 99%, 95% of the marine life up in North Benue with the idiotic developer thought that destroying 1,000 oh, mangroves God. to develop second homes because he said they serve no purpose. And they could they could have a substrate of, of up to 10 feet of mud, which is which, where the carbon is stored. So, you know, we got to do with this with sense. We, we want to now, what are we going to say to the world? That we're going to willy-nilly allow spillage to happen in our country when we're talking about touting, touting ourselves as the great place to uh, sell carbon credits to people. I mean, to they, they, their now let's be real, Joe. There's some flashy narratives when you're out on the campaign trail and on the world stage. They sound good when you say them, you know? Yo, but obviously, you got to yeah. know what you're talking well, you know, about you when you're know, talking lot, about it. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of these people like parliamentarians didn't even know what carbon carbon is or where it's stored. You know, I, and I, I give credit to some of the uh, in, um, parliamentarians who contacted me to get information with respect to even knowing the names of the mangroves in the Bahamas. Some of them don't even know the names of the mangroves that we have in the Bahamas. And then we're talking about getting in parliament and debating it and, and selling carbon credits when we don't even know exactly how it happens. I would say that the damage that was done to North Bimini Bay. That is in the billions of dollars, and somewhere along the line, the authorities in this country, country must hold those people responsible for destroying the, the, the marine life in that area. And whatever's going to happen now, in, in um, now we have these strong these winds, and now if that wind coming over Georgetown can blow that oil across uh, the, um, the water between, uh, what, what do you call it, the key over that beautiful key, um, uh, off, um, I was just over there the other day too. Uh, um, but anyway, that long, beautiful key across from, from Exuma, Georgetown, that can migrate across there because strong winds now coming from the south and the southeast. And that will, and of course, that um, bay, that island is across there. It can go across there, which has one of the most beautiful. And they have stingrays that come there. You can feed them. And oh my God. You know, we have such beauty in this country, but we are so ignorant in terms of how we're going to preserve it. But one of the things, you know, um, Naughty, I hope that this sends a clear message that, as I said recently, that we we must have the governor general sign a dictum that forever, eternally, there would be no messing around in the belly of Mother Earth in the ocean to dig in there to try to to dig up our ancestors and use them for fuel and allow it to uh, to pollute our beautiful waters. Let's go to the phone lines real quick, Joe. I got a couple of callers on the line. Let's see what they got to say. And yeah. then I got a couple of questions yeah. for you. Talking yeah, Heads, Guardian yeah. Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yeah, good evening, Nadi. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, Gardner? Yeah, man. Nadi, you know, I say big up to 52 and big up to Mr. Davos for not chopping for these politicians and and. And, and, and the corporate world, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, you see, and, you know, whether they foreign or domestic, they need to be held accountable. Well, well Gardner, my biggest thing is, you know, we have this oil spill, but you know where I was going with this, because, you know, we, you and I have shared the same discussion before. When it comes to oil in this country, the reason why we're still using oil and fossil fuel is connect the dots and follow the money. It's bad for business if you yeah, stop. And, and see, what happens is, is, is the corporations and the private individuals, they get the profit, but, but, but the public gets the loss. And then we you know, the losses on us. And you then, see, like like Mr. Dow would talk about the the, the development and and mini bay. And there's development all over this country. Every time you talk with tools on in these places, they 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 they, they road the coats, you know, mangoes and the like, you know. So uh, so you know, and then we we our governments go around the world talk about global warming and what are they doing at? You know, if, if we if we a country that 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 deal with fossil fossil fuel and we and we living in an archipelago, we got to transport our oil to water. Man, come on, man! Don't you think that we should 
whoever's transporting that oil should be have the best of equipment. And anybody ah. paying them up, up is got, about avoiding the spill. And find out who's got the contracts and, 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 and the deals to, to transport the and, and make sure that they're, you know, that they're held to, to a standard. Well, we know who these people are. These people are politicians, some PLP and the big, you know, PLP and the FNM. Gardner, we could, we could allude to it, but without a proper Freedom of Information Act that has some teeth in it. We know money, like you know, but, no, but only people like yeah. 52 and people like you are not afraid to say, are not afraid to hold these people accountable. But everybody else, Calvin, you know. Um, Go ahead, Joe. Naughty, can you hear me? You yeah, can we can, hear me we can both hear you. Then. Yeah, we can both hear you. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, oh, okay. Well, listen, you know, he, he struck some good points. You know, what, what are the contingency plans? Like, for example, in Equinor, that spillage, I was out there the day after it happened, and oil was like a foot and a half, two feet uh, on the road going all the way into the pine forest. And there were no contingency plans on the island to deal with it. It took them four days to be able to get contingency um, equipment and, and personnel from Florida some ones who had dealt with the Gulf spillage, to come over there to begin to assess what was happening and to begin to suck the 558,000 barrels of, of oil of our environment. And to this day, we do not see the compensation to this country, to the people of our nation, with respect to the fine that Equinor and Norway should pay to the people. Why is it that everything is a secret? And it was only, like I said to you and the gentleman, there, were no, there was no equipment. And obviously, I don't think there was any on Exuma either to deal there's with. Like, like, probably there's uh, none uh, in the Bahamas. How oil, could you be transporting oil to our waters with no no equipment? I mean, for, forget you, the spill. From you, if we aid the spill, you should be paying the monetary losses to the nation, and that ain't no billion of dollars. Billions of dollars. My question you, is you this: see, You see that man? You see that? But they're Joe, making a fortune, trillions of dollars of us, and you know they're treating us. And I'm going to use the word: they're treating us like little black niggers on a plantation. The oligarchy controls everything, and they don't get two hoots what happened to the ordinary people in this country. Now, my question is this. I heard the, the minister of uh, works today, Mr. Sears, who's a pretty stand-up guy, said that the, 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 that the relative agencies and, and private uh, entities that deal with this were en route to Exuma to deal with it. My question is, who are these entities that deal with it? What are their qualifications? Do they have the, do they have the equipment situation? Or are we just putting a Band-Aid over a gunshot wound? That, that's exactly what happens, Naughty. And I, but you know something? I, I always say, you know, this is uh, like even with the Equinor spillage, thank God, uh, quote unquote, that that went into, into the north, in, into the Pine Barrens mm -hmm. and the wetlands and not into our ocean. Because had we had 558,000 barrels of oil, going into our ocean because Equinor, the tanks are right there on the edge of, of the ocean. Uh, that would have been the catastrophic thing, not just for our ocean, but also for Florida. And so, you know, these are the things that politicians must get their minds around. They need to have sensible people like environment to environmentalists to teach. You know, they think we're just tree huggers. And that we're just trying to so make what? sure we're not. Truggy, we hug trees, among other things, but we protect the environment too. So what? Hug a tree a day. That's a good thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly, because they, they, they sequester the retreat, does that? Let me, let me, check, you know, the, and, and, let me check the phone lines again real quick, Joe. I see another call coming in. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, who's this? Yeah, you there, you don't know this. What's going on? Everything going on. Good day to your guest. Why, uh, Mr. Dowell need to be the star for the environment for the Well, I was just thinking the same thing, the environment, so, I swear to you, I, you took it right out of my head. Man, this man is be so on point, and he knows, I mean, but you know what? You know, the sad thing about it is, rather than use him and, and use his, his knowledge and all that stuff, they'll try to bury him deep as far as possible away from him. And, and for the life of me, I don't know why they can't, like, if you don't, what, what, what's supposed to come out of this? You're supposed to learn from disasters, like how to prepare for it. Learn and try to prevent them so you don't have to experience them again. Become exactly. proactive what rather than reactive. Exactly. What measures you all going to put in place? It already happened. We know it can happen if you all continue on the same line where people get, you know, oil business is great to get it to, to A to B as cheap as possible and then kill people on the profit. So what, what, then, and, and not, I mean, Exoma catching hell right now for all the stuff it's been going through lately. And then now uh, you oh, have yeah. most tourists, oh, yeah. most of the tourists, I've been to Exoma a couple of weeks ago, and every time I go, the plane is be full. Not with, not with citizens, you know, but with tourists. 
and most yeah yeah I know brother I noticed the same thing and I was there for four days with my mm -hmm. grandson just got back two days ago and, mm -hmm. and I mean the people are pouring there because they're looking for a pristine environment to enjoy themselves and we got to make sure that we keep keep it pristine and good for our people not just yeah. foreigners not only that, Mr. Darwin, like, listen, they, they, right now, we are in Exuma and all over the Bahamas. I mean, they need to have lanes where tankers could go, and that need to be away from the, the gardens, the fish gardens. Uh, and we have yes, those channels, yes, and yes, channels. Yes, yes, yes. Carla, you know, today was kind of short notice because we didn't expect to have a 30,000-gallon oil spill in Exuma. Yeah. But uh -huh. moving forward, we're definitely going to have Joe back on because we got to yeah. get to the news now, but... Joe, that's something we got to talk about. What, what are the what are the, what are the preventative measures we could take? Like the, like the caller said, it's designed shipping lanes for oil throughout our archipelago. What else could we take? Obviously, we got to have some some checks and balances and some protocols that you have double barrel tankers, uh, um, um, you know, it taking the oil, not not single barrel tankers, because obviously that's a big part of the problem today. That's not that uh, you're supposed uh, to have uh, two, two tanks. Anyway, we'll talk much more on this, Naughty Man, but thanks for giving I, me I that really call. I really appreciate it, man, and thank you for being such short notice. And I will be calling okay. you throughout the rest of the week. Keep me up to, up to uh, snuff on and into next week because I'm not going to let this go. I'm going to talk about this every day. This is not going to be like Equinor. I didn't have this no, platform no, no, back then when that happened. It, I got it, it now, it, and I'm going to use it. Uh, and uh, the company uh, at fault here is a local company supplying oil and stuff for Grand Bahama and for New Providence. So... You know, we got to hold our people re uh, responsible. Yeah, and we shoot and ourselves I got, in the I foot. I got a direct contact with Exuma, so they're going to keep me up to date as well, okay? All right, Joe, be safe, be blessed. Regards and love to the fam, man, and we'll talk soon, okay? Oh, okay, and God bless you, and God bless my beloved Bahama land. Always. All right, man, as we get to the break, let me get a couple of texts real quick. Watch who get the contracts for the, for the uh, remediation of that oil spill. Yeah, keeping my eye on that for sure. Um... Mr. Darwin, may you live to see 120 or more. We need you here to protect the, the earth from those who defile our earth. And our All right, I'll give you the answers to, to your trivia question on the flip side of the news. But, hey, great first hour. Thanks to all my guests. Thanks to everybody chiming in. Solid stuff. Good stuff. Keep it going. On the flip side of the break, we'll get into to the sports right after the news. So keep it right where you got it. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Craving tasty KFC chicken and need an affordable fix? The KFC Quick Fix menu has three tasty options that are both big on taste and value with plenty of mouth-watering goodness. Try the KFC Flavor Full Box, packed with three pieces of crispy fried chicken legs and whole wings, fluffy mashed potato with gravy, corn, a buttery biscuit, and an ice-cold Pepsi for only $9.95. Get your favorite chicken fix today, only at KFC Nassau. It's finger-licking good. George, shoes and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always-growing collection of amazing and trendy stuff, we cover women together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on in today at John's where we put fashion at your Feet. We're not always able to see the storms in life approaching, but we can take the necessary steps to be prepared to ensure the safety of ourselves, our loved ones, and our property. This hurricane season, trust J.S. Johnson Insurance agents and brokers. We'll be here to help you get back on track in your time of need. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S. Johnson, insurance agents and brokers, giving you peace of mind. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options. And they set up a robotic prostatectomy. Came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number. They see you as a part of the family. I'm going on with my life. It's a real gift. 
Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Let Duncan put the good back into morning with our delicious breakfast sandwiches. Enjoy a fluffy egg topped with American cheese and bacon, ham, or savory sausage on your choice of a flaky croissant, a warm bagel, or a toasted English muffin. Choose your favorite and have breakfast just the way you like it. Make it a combo with golden hash browns and a freshly brewed coffee and get rising and shining with Dunkin' Breakfast Sandwiches today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. With Naughty is sponsored by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, the Delta Bank Bahamas, Fine Threads, John's Department Store, J.S. Johnson, Joker's Wild, KFC, La Fest, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, and Tropical Gyros. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9. The Wednesday edition continues right now. And listen, just, just so you know the answer for your brain teaser, all right? Didn't get one today. So we're going to double it up tomorrow. Whoever wins tomorrow is going to get two entries in the big platinum drawing for Laugh Fest. But today's answer was one-word text, one-word answers. They find that annoying and rude. Oh, you could do the abbreviations. You could do all of that. Just don't answer them like, yeah, no. Yes, maybe, why? Woo, they got problems with that. So we'll double it up tomorrow, and we'll slide into the uh, second half of the show. So you know we're talking sports right now, and as we do each and every day, we're going to set it off with Today in Sports, all brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's, Today in Sports History, that is. Well worth the trip out there to the Old Fort Shopping Plaza, Monday through Friday, great for lunch and dinner. Then on uh, the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with breakfast starting at 9 a.m., don't forget, every Wednesday, every Friday, happy hour at Naughty Johnny's, 5 to 7 p.m. So be sure to check them out. Mr. Producer, is this a caller on the line? Still hanging? Let, let me take this real quick, and then we'll wrap this segment up. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's that? Talking Heads. You haven't been on the line long time. Yeah, boy, Sparky was holding on. Man, we went to news. What you got, what you got for me real quick, man? Be- been on the line before your show started. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know you go. You's a little barracuda. What you got for me? Man, you know, I guess everybody here in this, this, this disaster this morning, I mean, there's the only thing, you know, one, a couple of years ago, we was all around, but telling people don't mess with our waters, don't go around there talking about y'all digging for oil, what happened if something that, some oil Well, you, you know my stance on it is boil fish, not oil fish. We don't yeah, need... This ain't even in the result of digging for oil. No, this just this, is an accident. This, 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 yeah, this is after you get the oil out of the dog on bottom. Right. Yeah. This is why. This is the question why we say why are we still dealing with petroleum? Why are we still dealing with oil? We could be solar. We could be LNG. We could be wind. We could be hydroponic. We could be green energy a long time. But you know, the, 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 the scary thing now, now we got to be admitting this now. We, we ain't fool. We ain't say fool no more. Even for us that go out to school, high school, you know, we that we. We ain't fooled no more. And we internet savvy. Then we, uh, yeah, we, we know all about the internet and smartphone and all kind of thing now. But now, what I'm, what I'm saying, uh, you know, it's difficult to say like this. When we hear about the principals involved with the companies. Then it'll go all make sense. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Follow the dots and follow the money and when you'll see why. The, when we hear about the people who's raised the price of gas and oil on us and our electricity and everything. And why they don't want to stop using this oil and thing? Because they're making all kind of money from it. But when we had a name to these people, or they going to keep them quiet, and when we had the politicians and all of them who got shares in these companies, you know what going to happen, right? The ish get the fine, Sparky. They, they, they go silent, and we ain't going to the truth. No, no, we can make sure it's defined. We, we ain't need... going the truth because so much of those, what we call elitists. No, no. Every, don't name, don't call it listen, Sparky, I promise you, and I know we got to get into sports in a second, all right? But I'll tell you this. I promise you, every day on the show, I'm going to bring that oil spill up until it is properly dealt with. And if that means naming the particulars, connecting the dots, letting the people know why we're still dealing with oil, then that's what I'm going to do. And then, not, not only that, before we end it, you know how we end it? 
we can end it by getting the money in our treasury from them who owe us for this disaster. There you go. If you owe us for what you did wrong, pay us. I agree. Even if you and your family and your company go broke, pay the Bahamian people for messing up our water. You can't take it with you anyway, so you may as well do the right uh, yeah, thing. But All right. but, yeah, but some of them will leave it behind for their children and grandchildren. Pay the Bahamian people. All right. That's our money. You mess up our water. You mess up our fish. You mess up our beaches. Pay us. Well, we can put Sparky on you. Thanks, Sparky. I check you tomorrow. I always appreciate you chiming and Love you because you're decent, man. All right, uh, today in sports history, because I was hot today, Pearly. Boy, the oil spilling the Zuma had everybody hot today. Everybody hot. Yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah, 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 Joe yeah, Dalva yeah, yeah. chime in. Casherina McKinney from Brief. Chris Wilkie um, from uh, Waterkeep. I, and you know I go with oil. You know how I go with oil. So sorry for the uh, extra um, pontification. But yeah, today in sports, man, we got a good one in sports. Uh, 1859, Brooklyn and New York played baseball at Fashion Park Racecourse on Long Island in New York. The game marked the first okay. time that the admission was charged to see a baseball game. It costs 50 wow. cents to get in, and the players on the field did not <laughs> receive a salary. Wow. There ain't nothing in the season costs 50 cents anymore. 18, nothing in that state, not even payments. 1859, it was 50 cents to get into a baseball game. Do you know what the cheapest ticket in 2022 is to a baseball game right now? Might be $50. That's what I'm saying, but wow. 19 so you could get like you could get like the $6 and $10 stuff like in the home run derby, home run seats, like they have them those. You know, it's not seats like, you know, yeah. these seatings like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but definitely, you know, speaking of home run derby, we can talk about that. We can talk about that All Star game tomorrow, uh, t- last night, today. Uh, in 1947, yeah. the National Football League, the NFL, ruled that no professional team could sign a player who had college eligibility remaining. Well, that changed later on, as you all know. 1958, the PGA Championship changed from match play to stroke play. And I always love stroke play over match play. Stroke play is way yeah, better. Yeah, me too. Every man for himself. Yeah, I like it. 1974, Carl Rosen's Chris Everett beat Miss Musket by 50 lengths in the winner-take-all match race at Hollywood Park. And in 2003, Ben Curtis, an unknown PGA Tour rookie in his first major championship, won the British Open. Today's sports quote, I don't think God cares that we're not hitting. If he did, then Billy Graham would be hitting. Chris Sabo, Cincinnati Reds infielder when owner Marge Shot asked if prayers would help the team. You remember Chris Sabo, who used to play for the Reds, yeah. who looked like Spuds McKenzie, the, the, the Budweiser pitch dog? Remember he used to wear the glasses and yeah. he looked like Spuds McKenzie? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Chris I remember him. Sabo. All right, we got a test to chime in. Uh, Naughty, tell, tell Pearlie Stanton, All Star Game MVP. More to come. Go, Yankees. <laughs> So off the text lines, right. buddy. I'm, I I only have to, I have to read the texts. All right. I, I don't know if they're Yankees or, or Dodger fine, fans. That's or, fine. That's fine. That's fine. If, if there's any consolation to you, Kershaw looked absolutely phenomenal on the mound last is night. He? Sure did. Listen, listen, listen. But you will be happy to know a certain 11 year old was transfixed to Kershaw as he pitched last night. That's my brethren. That's my brethren. He got sense. And, and if, if, listen, for you, I was happy, okay, because he did do uh-huh. the, the business in the first inning. I think it was uh, one hit, and that was it. And he picked him off. Uh-huh. And had a strikeout. Yep, so yep, he did yep. what he had to do. Now, yep. as I was leaving, Stat Boy was like, dear God, we're down two to nothing, man. Here we go. If the National League wins this, or Uncle Earl will never shut up. And Kershaw is on. I said, relax. By the time I come from Jokers, you'll be singing a different story. And by the time I came from Jokers, he was singing a different story. So somebody on my Dodger chat, you know, I don't know about 19 Dodger chats on Facebook, right? Only? Let me put on that. It, it, only. You know, I had, to, I, had to, I had to get out of one or two. <laughs> Think it's Gosselin. You're Paul cutting Cuba, down there. You're I cutting say, down <laughs> It's Goss, it's Gosselin's fault we lost. I say, hold on. They scored three runs, two, and it's Gosselin's fault. Okay, I got you. Listen, Gosselin was the unlucky dude that some runs came up on, but that's an all-star game. That's three to two. I mean, that, that was an excellent game. It was one of the more entertaining games I've seen for a while. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. You know what I loved the most out of it, Earl? Was the Dawn uniforms. Yes. 
They were nice. I they would throw back to them old, you know, Chicago Black Sox, you know, like early day, you know, back in the day uniforms. They were nice. I liked them. Can't, you know? Yeah. And it was good seeing Jazz, you know, get his introduction and, and all the media stuff. That the, the, the Major League, listen, people, if you can't see the Jazz Chisholm is not only the face of the Miami Marlins, but also one of the young faces of Major League Baseball, you are blind. Yeah, and if, and if they're not, if, if if Major League Baseball ain't doing it, the media show making sure that he is. But they they love they, them some Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? They yeah. love up some Jazz, and I'm not and mad at them at all. And him and the shortstop, uh, the the the, the shortstop out of um, is it the home run derby? Should no, uh, Taylor, that's his name, or, or yeah. Anderson? No, no, Anderson. You're talking about the, the the other second baseman for the White Sox, right? No, the shortstop is it Anderson? Is the shortstop who's the, who started the short for the American League? It might it might have been Anderson from from the White Sox, but I thought he played second. But that's fine. But the, that kid, that the, the, the kid is him and Jazz. Uh, uh, what you call him? The, the the face of 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 baseball. What baseball is now becoming? Uh, and a real entertainment. And another sport. one. Um. Yeah, he does play shortstop. You you right, Earl. Yeah. Timothy yeah, Anderson, he's, he's, Tim he's Anderson. Like, yeah, him and Jazz are like, for the like flamboyant type. Let's have fun on the on the on the back. Let's track, let's track, you know. Listen, yeah. just indulge me for a minute. Would look good in pinstripes. You know they would look good in pinstripes, man. You know what? Jazz at second, Anderson you know, you know at, at short. Man, they look good in Yankee pinstripes. My yeah, they would God, look real good at pinstripes. They would look real good at pinstripes. But they like, see, these fellas can't take the cold. So they would look even better in Dodger Blue. Earl, jokes aside, if there's one franchise that could really use another piece right there and, and a piece that could blow up into being a star, is I see Jazz in, in a Dodger uniform easily. The market, the marketing, the opportunity. Yep. Oh, heck yeah, he's definitely a big market. New York, I have the Yankees and the Mets. West Coast, you got the Dodgers, you got the Angels. Got some the teams Giants. and the Giants. I was just about to say, yeah, the Giants. But I, I nah. definitely feel that we are watching the last year or two of Jazz in, in, in Miami. I think Be so. Because think so. Think either they're going to pay him buku bucks and keep him there and call it a day, and he's going to be a great player on a crappy team forever and ever, amen. Or <laughs> one of the big market boys is going to come in and say, see, put your name right there on the dotted line. Uh, let me see. Let me tell you. If you see the Yankees give up their, because you know your number one prospect is that shortstop. If, if they give up, that, give up that, yeah. If y'all give him up to get Soto, if y'all give him up to get one, then I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see at the end of the day in a year or so, Jazz end up in pinstripe. If you see the Dodgers get Soto, they're not going to sign Trey Turner to a long term contract. I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen like that again. So. You know, things, you have to see what happens because these, yeah. uh, these dudes have plans for more than a year. They don't plan what we can do next year. We can no. Do years, and speaking, and speaking of Juan Soto, though, Earl, that kid is a freak. He is a freak. And, I, and when I say freak, I don't mean, I don't mean freak in a bad way. I mean freak. A phenomenal ball player. Monster, dude. Yeah. That kid is impressive. getting better. Whoever gets him, as long as he stays healthy, will have a superstar for 10 to 15 years. Listen, let me tell you something, man. Um, his nickname is Childish Bambino. Like Childish Gambino, yeah. the rapper Childish Bambino, because he hits. That's a great nickname. But there's two guys that I see dominating baseball in their own right. And, and Jazz is definitely a face of the future. And I think, you know, bar an injury, he'll be fine. And he'll be in the conversation. Yep. Soto okay. is one. And Otani yep. from the Angels is another one because Otani is another yeah. freak of nature too. Uh, he's more than a freak of nature. He's more than a freak. I, because, you know, what I enjoyed with the All-Star game last night, they mic'd up a bunch of different players. So they, these guys were, and the, one, of the, one of the pitchers was talking about having to, Said he remember, I think it was Garrett Cole. Said he was on first base and somebody hit a triple. And he ended up scoring from first base. And then the next play, the person was out and he had to go on the mound right after that. He, so they were really talking about the designated hitter and saying how they don't miss, he doesn't miss it. But I'm saying, he's saying, but 
Otani does that night in and night out. He would come, steal a base, hit a base hit, steal a base, score from second, come out, pitch. That kid is, I don't think he'd be able to do that for like 10, 12 years. I think he's got to make a decision at some point. Well, Purdy, I got I got Simmons chiming in on on, on the text lines. Coach Simmons has chimed in. He says, "Listen, Naughty, tell Purdy there's some great stuff he could watch on Netflix. I know Purdy likes to watch sports all the time, party sports documentaries and sports movies. Well, there's yeah. one on Netflix that I think Earl would definitely enjoy. It's called The Captain, His Way, and it begins on July 18th. You know who the captain is, right? Derek Jeter. I know. I do. Listen, every other commercial on ESPN is they're promoting that." I mean, on Major League Baseball, they're promoting that. So, yeah, watch so, it and enjoy it. it. I'm going to watch it. I am. I am going to watch it. And then he says, um, to also remind you, okay? Oh, Lord. And let me quote Imagine. it now. That, and I quote, cash is not selling. Volpe. I, I, I didn't say he was. I said, if. They were to do that because that has been in the conversation. And trust me, the Nats want the Nats would want a, a major league ready player. Um, I say if they do that, then I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't think they will give him up. Well, I, something something gonna happen. Something gonna happen. Lot of other sports. I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um. To see this offseason in baseball. Pause, because I think this offseason is going to see some fireworks, Earl. Oh, then you're going to see some fireworks, some money you can spend and all that. I think, if I, if I remember correctly, I think the salary cap goes up. Yeah, you're going to so, get there's more I'm money to be spent next year for I'm sure. As far as I'm concerned with the Dodgers, they could trade anybody except Bobby Miller or Vargas, the Cuban player. What, any one of those two, they just don't touch them too, and I don't care what you do after. Yeah, I I know I, I know I know you you got your your eye on a couple, but after that oh man I love I love that kid Vargas he's Cuban he's major league ready every level of minor leagues he played he's dominated he's a triple A hitting three hundred man um he, he's he's there's a, there's like four or five guys Jazz included that I think are gonna carry baseball for the next 10, 15 years barring injury Jazz. The kid, the, the the kid from the shortstop, the kid who who, who got beat at Rodriguez, the other Dominican. Um, he he's nine, he's twenty one. He's gonna be some, and it's gonna be in Seattle next year. So he's gonna his home. You're gonna see him be big up a lot, as building up to that. And then you got then you got Oshani, and they're still gonna push Mike Trout. And then you get some other young players coming up to the to, you know coming up to the league that are talented. The kid, the the, the Hayes, the the center field in, in Atlanta, man. You can't hit no hanging base hit like you think you can go in the gap and hang up. No, you better hit a line shot in the gap because that kid can run that ball down. It, so it, it it's, is. It's, it's, I'm excited for baseball. The baseball has a great future with the talent that's coming out, a young talent. I, I think you, we got, like you said, the young talent is going to carry the, 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 the league for several years, a couple of, couple of years to come, at least a decade, barring injury. So it's going to be fun to watch. Definitely going to be fun to watch. It? What is good about it, you're seeing more other black players, black Americans, black uh, Caribbean players, outside of the Dominicans and the Cubans and all that. You're getting a, a lot of African Americans and are getting into baseball and being stars. Kids, the, the short stuff, the black is an African American. Jazz, the Bahamian, the different. So it's 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 starting to to grow within the in, within across all borders. So that's that's wonderful about baseball. All right, but that wraps up our home court segment, all brought to you, of course, by Burger King Nassau, and it's all about that Zesty Whopper. Be sure to check out the Zesty Whopper today. All right, saucy, crunchy, and full of flavor. Grab you one today by itself or as a combo at your favorite Burger King Nassau location for takeout, drive through and delivery with the Craven app. We're going to take a quick break right now, and on the flip side of the break, we'll get right back at you with the second hour here on Talking Heads. We'll continue the conversation with uh, Earl the Pearl. He's in the building. And uh, we'll definitely pick up uh, the conversation uh, with Tropical Gyros, who's in and who's out segment. We got a couple of things to talk about as far as Major League Baseball, as far as the NBA, some some rumblings and rumors of possible trades, and NFL offseason news as well, including Micah Parsons being out of his absolute mind, Pearly. 
sneaks to a football field two days ago in disguise just to play flag football, just to play? You, you think Michael Wright? You think Michael, exactly. Michael Parsons, our all-world linebacker, Michael, sneaking out to play football? Did flag. he hurt himself? No. Oh, okay. But still, though. Do it's like him need yeah, to be that's, bubble that's wrapped crazy. in the preseason until the until the season starts. Bubble wrap them. They don't even need they even need to look at the field. They might strain their eyes looking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't like their stuff like that. Go, just, just before you go to break, I I I I love when people, you know, I know you're the man, you're the myth, you're the legend, but it's all good than you. So I heard that I have somebody there who call me Earl the Pearls. Earl the Pearls. I've been called plenty of things, but I've never been called Earl the Pearls. Pearls are just Earl the Pearls. No, it's plur- they pluralized it. Earl the Pearls. Yeah, so I want to say hi. Thanks for, you know, looking out and keep listening. And on that break, from Earl the Pearls' mouth to yours, talking heads will continue right after the break. <laughs> Let Duncan put the good back into morning with our delicious breakfast sandwiches. Enjoy a fluffy egg topped with American cheese and bacon, ham, or savory sausage on your choice of a flaky croissant, a warm bagel, or a toasted English muffin. Choose your favorite and have breakfast just the way you like it. Make it a combo with golden hash browns and a freshly brewed coffee and get rising and shining with Dunkin' Breakfast Sandwiches today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. George, shoes and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trouble women, men, children, the whole family, together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carry small home appliances. So come on in today at John's where we put fashion at your feet. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together. And we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey. For every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world. Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Pension Plan. Island game keep you in it. Percy Pension Plan. Dream big, we will help you live it. Percy Pension Plan. Island game, we got you. Percy Pension Plan. From the friends you can trust Wise Guy Entertainment and the Beam Agency in association with Tropical Gyros presents the 15th annual Laugh Fest. Laugh now, cry later. Live at Fusion Superplex. Starring your headliner. Fresh off tour with D.L. Hughley and back by... Get ready for your feature comedian, Cisco Duran. I'll tell you right now, that's what fat people do, okay? Fat people look at other fat people and we judge each other, all right? I saw the way you looked at me when I got on stage. Like, he looked at me, he was like, oh my God. Hey, baby, I'm not that fat, right? Jesus Christ. And get ready for some of the 242's funniest comedians, Das Quay, BJ, and Shad Fur. All hosted by the Bahamian king of comedy, Naughty. Two big shows. Friday, July 29th, and Saturday, July 30th at Fusion Superplex. General admission, $40. Limited VIP, $60. Tickets go on sale Monday, July 18th at Fusion Superplex. Laugh Fest 2022, brought to you by the Platinum Sponsors, Fine Threads, John Shoes, and KFC Nassau. Whether you like it hot or you enjoy being original, KFC has the only chicken sandwiches with attitude, featuring 100% extra large white meat chicken fillets for 100% flavor. Enjoy the famous flavor of KFC 11 herbs and spices in the KFC Original Recipe Burger. Or take the heat up a notch with a spicy fillet with a KFC Kentucky Deluxe Sandwich. And for a limited time, enjoy your favorite sandwich with fries for only $7. That's KFC Nassau. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day.
Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. The Wednesday edition continues right now. 5.35 p.m. is the time. And we got to get into, you know, we're going to continue right now into the who's in and who's out segment. All brought to you, of course, by Tropical Gyros, home of the original gyros, the original Bahamian gyros, like jerk chicken, crack lobster, crack conch, barbecue salmon, grilled veggies. Be sure to check out the famous jerk chicken salad and the bowls as well over there at uh, Tropical Gyros. And big up the Tropical Gyros, you know, teamed up with Wise Guy Entertainment and the Beam Agency to bring you Laugh Fest 2022, the 15th annual. And don't forget, every time you shop at uh, Tropical Gyros, drop that receipt in the box. Fill out your details, drop that receipt in your box. You could be winning a platinum experience to laugh at Fusion Superplex next weekend, Friday and Saturday. All right, but uh, right now, let's get into it. Pearly, who's in and who's out? Or should I say Earl of the Pearls? Who's in and who's out? I guess, it's, I guess they pluralized it because all, of all the pearls of wisdom you, you drop on these shows, you know, the nuggets. And the way you actually, you know, press the mute button and don't know how to come back in because you mute yourself. I <laughs> really did mute myself. <laughs> you used to mute yourself, King. Boy, you can mute yourself. My God. I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat what I said. No, don't. Um, but as we look at it now, though, um, like I said, who's in and who's out? We got a couple of things to, to look at. If you look at the NBA, Earl potentially returning to your Los Angeles Lakers. And partially my Los Angeles Lakers <laughs> is, 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 is one Dennis Schroeder. I don't know about that. Advocating. I, I, I just think that's just uh, flamboy. There's no fit for him there. I mean, he had an opportunity for $84 million and turns it down. All right? Bit him. So at but the end of the day. He got sugar on the ice Huh? He got sugar on the ice tea. Yeah, so now he came back and he had the situation in Boston. Ended up being traded there at the end. And, you know, here we are. Where does Schroeder go? But the, 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 the team that keeps popping up are the Lakers. Now, yeah, an, I, I don't see it. Somebody who's definitely I mean, if it in. League minimum, if it's league minimum, because they ain't got much money, they ain't got nothing like that to give him. So, you know. Definitely somebody who is in officially now is our very own DeAndre Ayton. Former number of a number one overall pick has signed a reported a four-year, one hundred and thirty-three million contract to remain in Phoenix, and it is fully guaranteed. Wow, that's what I'm so happy for him. This when our when our papas get paid, that's wonderful. But you know the NBA, that's a guaranteed contract. One thirty-three is one thirty-three. Ain't no like the NFL, you know, a hundred million, but forty-six mm-hmm. is guaranteed. But the other, yeah, that's why the, that's why the fellas are trying to get their bonus up front. Give me, you pay me 146 million, give me 100 million up front, and then you pay the 46 over time. He was every Spears uh, of ESPN on Monday, and Aiden expressed how the experience of being a free agent was uh, a learning experience for him. Uh, learning experience for him. He said, This is a blessing. This contract not only has generational impact for my family, but also with the way we are able to work in the Phoenix community and back home in the Bahamas. That is the things that we go by. I've come to understand that this is a business, so I was more anxious to know at the end that the end result would be so I could focus, move on, and just get back to work. I just treated everything like a business. Just keep being professional, approach everything with professionalism, and not looking too deep into anything. Sounds like the head's a little on his shoulder straight there, Earl. Sounds so, sounds so. The, the move means the Suns, at least for now, keep their nucleus of Aiton and the all-star backcourt of Devin Booker and Chris Paul. The trio pushed Phoenix to the NBA Finals in 2021 and a franchise record 64 wins during the most recent regular season. Now, I think uh, that Booker and Paul situation, I think that's the Achilles heel of the Phoenix Suns. I think that's where the problem lies. They'll get you there in the regular season. They'll get you there in the regular season. But Chris Paul will break down on you in a seven-game series. At some point, yeah, I think he's, he's going to get yeah. consumed in a seven-game series. Booker, on the other hand, he'll put up the numbers, but but sometimes if you look at Lection and what he does, he got some yeah. oink-oink in him. He got some, you know, ball dominance in him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that may be a problem, yeah. too. I don't, think, I don't think things are cut and dry with that backcourt in Phoenix. 
All right? I think the fact that Aiden's in, I think that's awesome. That's yeah. a great move. I think Phoenix problems more so than the age of Chris Paul than anything else. Because I think with, with, a, with, a, with a healthy, strong Chris Paul, he can control the pro and control Booker. But I think they will have to manage his time in the regular season. Instead of him playing 35 minutes, he may have to only play 20, 21, 22 minutes and only play that, that heavy minute in, in on occasion to preserve his body for the playoffs. And in the first couple of rounds, if they don't need him as bad, they don't, don't play him as hard. But No, I mean, that's what it. I'm more excited about. What I'm really more excited about is who I think may be in with the Lakers. And I understand that they've re-engaged the talks in Indiana, and the Lakers are talking to Indiana in reference to our great behavior and player Buddy Hill. Is that the I'm Miles Turner Buddy, Buddy Hill package? Is it the Miles Turner yes. Buddy Hill package? Listen. Yes. I like that Miles Turner Buddy Hill package better than Kyrie. I like Kyrie going there. Don't get me wrong. But I like the Miles Turner Buddy Hill package for one simple reason. You put Miles Turner at the center position. He's led the league in blocks yeah. for the last three years. He's got a huge wingspan. It allows AD to stay at the power forward position, not get in his feelings. You know what I mean? And just yeah. focus on killing punks from the from the, the the four position, the small forward. Then that allows LeBron to play the, the small forward. You could put Kendrick Nunn in at the point. You slide Buddy Hill at the two. And Buddy got jump shots for days, wide open jumpers for days. Period. 30, 39% shooter, almost a 40% shooter. And he's gotta Man, be the, he's gotta be the away. starter. He's gotta be the starter. Who's gonna start over him? But now, that's what the, that's but now what you the got but now you got Austin Reeves. You got the recent additions that we just signed. Um, um, Harris. Um, what wh- was his name from 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 the Spurs, man? I know, oh, man. I know you talking about. Talking about we just about signed him, that. and then we signed um, we, we signed those those couple of pieces. You know that the, the Santa Troy Santa, 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 yeah. Troy Brown Troy Brown that, that you know we we signed him. That makes the bench stronger. Bryant, the center, that makes the bench stronger. You already got Austin Reeves coming off the bench. That makes it stronger. Listen, I mean, when you look at it, they, they, there's some pieces there that's been put in place. All right, so we, we drafted Max Christie. We signed him. <clears throat> we signed Kendrick Nunn. You get Austin Reeves. You get Damian Jones, the center. Uh-huh, another good and Lonnie, backup. And Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker, Lonnie Walker. that's Walker. who I'm talking about. Lonnie Walker. Okay. Now you look at that bench. Yeah. Lonnie Walker, Austin Reeves, Brian at the center position, Damian Jones at the small mm-hmm. forward, I mean at the power forward and the center position. Hey, you got some bench pieces there that can play. You got you get Rain and Gabriel, you got Scotty Pippen Jr. And you got you uh, Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson so gave you, the Lakers some really good minutes last time. Now what you need now, I, I like the bench. Now you need another shooter to go along with Buddy Hill. We need another. Now you know yep. who's one we find on the cheap that we bring off the bench and did well for us last year? That's where Carmelo Anthony makes sense in a return role. Okay. That's, that's where yeah, you, that's, yeah, yeah. that's where veterans minimum yeah. Right. And that's where you start looking at the potential that there is, you know, with that trade. With Buddy Hill and Miles Turner, you get instantly better and two pieces, two two positions that you need, and now your bench is solid too. But based on the conversation, based on the conversation that the, the articles I'm reading, they're not ruling out the also getting Kyrie. That's not ruled out. Well, how they can get Kyrie? So what are they going to do? They're going to trade. They're going to trade Westbrook. Time, it, may be, it may be a couple of second round picks and a first round pick. Westbrook goes to Indiana. Taylor Horton, I think, he goes to Indiana too, and they get Miles Turner and and Buddy, and then they do something to get I, I Kyrie with what number one pick, twenty seven number one pick, and then two or two or three second round picks. Well, I will tell you if they pull that off, I will be a practicing John Morant firing back in my purple and gold like I never left. And when you all look at me, I'll pull a Daryl Miller on you and say, you're back, and I never left. And you remember when Dar- they pull that, if, 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 if they pull that off, I have newfound respect for them. Uh, for Palenka. Yeah. And our front office. Yeah. And Jeannie yeah, Buss yeah. saying, we're going to get this ish right and make it happen. Yeah. That makes sense. If they pull, if they pull, if they pull that off, they automatically become a contender. Yes, sir. I said contender. Don't get all riled up and pick up the phone and call. I didn't say it. I said a contender. 
Yeah, but that, it makes and sense. And, and those are the kind of moves that you have to make if you want to bring a franchise like the Lakers back to prominence where they need to be. And, and, and in L.A., it's not, it's not about mediocrity in L.A. It's about winning championships in L.A., you know. I mean, right. how many? I forgot the number. How many the Lakers? 17. Have and, and if a banner don't get thrown up. 17. And if a banner don't get thrown up. All right, then. All right. So you know what I mean? So I, 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 I've been watching championships in L.A. from, from you know, from I was a kid. So I, I, I'm used to championships. I'm used to the Magic championships. I'm used to the Kobe championships. Kobe and Shaq. Kobe and Powell championships. You know, I guess I get spoiled. Spur like milk. Spur, and you know, in particular, taking in particular, my my dolphins ain't gonna do. You know, I almost I forget it. I almost forget I was on radio. I say maybe my dolphins haven't performed at the, at the established level that I anticipated. You know, you know that that that's, that's my you know yeah. So, what do we gotta do? Boy, I tell you though, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at I'm I'm looking at the season, Earl boy. NBA gonna have a lot of parity in it. Yes, I think so. A lot of teams are going like the Bucks. They 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 just now. This may not sound like a big signing to 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 everybody, or to 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 the average basketball fan, but for people who really follow the game, the Bucks made a big signing today. Pat Connaughton. All right, they signed him to a multi-year extension. Right now he's the versatile swingman, a swingman. Yes, and he's just coming off a a season where he posted career highs in point six and a half minutes a game. And his three-point percentage was almost 40%, 39.5. That's, so, that's the um, Caucasian guy, right? Yeah, that's the, the white boy yeah. gunner. And, you know, Pat is a key. As a matter of fact, he, he had, come to think of it, come to remember that, that guy hit some clutch buckets in the playoffs. Exactly. And Pat he is had a, some big shots in the playoffs. That's a big signing for them. Yeah, he's going to get even be even more confident next year. Bucks general manager John Horst said Pat is a key contributor to our success with his energy, toughness, teamwork, and three-point shooting, and he's continued to embrace our fans in the city of Milwaukee. And we're glad to have to uh, have agreed to an extension with him. Now, last year was his fourth with the Bucks. He played in 65 games, 19 he started, and like I said, he averaged a career high 9.9 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 1.3 assists in career high 26 minutes per game. Shot 45% from the field, 39.5 from three, and 83% from the free throw line. And he's hitting, a, to, and he was hitting the career best two, 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 two threes a game. That's wonderful. And, and, and like I said, next year he'll be even more confident. But it's interesting that I said he has embraced the, the, the city of Milwaukee like that's New York or L.A. I've been to Milwaukee. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I've been there too, man. Milwaukee. What <laughs> oh, a cheese. What oh, a cheese. Yep, that's it. A lot of cheese. And 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 Packer, even, you know, the Packers dominate everything in Milwaukee. I, I, had, a, I had a dear friend from Kenosha, Wisconsin, which was right outside the city of Milwaukee. Kenosha, and, Wisconsin. And, yeah, Wisconsin. That's, that's what he's talking about, Wisconsin. We're from Wisconsin. Where are you from? We're from Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, betcha. Nice. Sure Kenosha betcha. Nice. Sure betcha. Betcha, sure. We're from Wisconsin. Yeah. That's how they talk, right? Yeah. Anyway. You know what is what like what, what we take for granted of us jumping on a plane to to, to um freeport or we jump on a mail boat to go to Elutra or, or Exuma. Over in the Midwest, jumping in a car and driving from Minneapolis to Milwaukee was like you know, like let's do it. And they did a, they do a lot of driving in, 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 in the middle of the United States. Not so you know, not so much in, in the in the in the east, but in the Midwest, they drive all over the place. They drive nine, fifteen hours like it's nothing. Well, that's and uh, plane driving from here to Coral Harbor. Some other news, Earl. Uh, some rookies. The twenty twenty two draft lottery picks. You know, summer league is is done, but uh, Paolo Blanchero of Orlando. He averaged 20 points, five rebounds, and six assists. They say he still needs work defensively. Uh, and nonetheless, though, he, he, he's, he's going to be a star. Here's our boy, number two, Chad Holmgren from Oklahoma City, who was drunk up in Banana Indeed. Man's cab, allegedly, the night before the draft. Allegedly. Uh, the seven foot rookie from Gonzaga isn't uh, ready to be OKC's best of, uh, beast of burden. But he probably surprised many, uh, many skeptics at the Summer League, all right, because he had some great op- moments, great opportunities. And uh, through three starts in the Summer League, he averaged 16 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks per game. 
while hitting better than 40% of his three-pointers. Post-defense in the half court, especially against brawny foes, is the challenge, but he looked comfortable rolling to the rim or facing up from the outside. So he's going to gain some weight to, put on some weight. to defend he's down. Put on some weight. Right, and then yeah. once he does that, he's good. He's gonna be good. I think home run will be fine for him. Jabari Smith from the Could Houston. Be the next Bird. Don't go there now. Easy. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. Jabari Go Smith of the Houston Rockets. Uh, he was tied many by, by many as as the number one pick to come out. Well, two. But um, oh. instead, he's the he's the new centerpiece of of, of the youthful Houston Rockets uh, rotation. And uh, this can be good too. You know, he, he's defense first, and offense is a bonus, but he averages four, he averaged yeah. 14.4 points in summer play, only on 13 shots a game, he shot 37%. So he's going to be a banger. He's going to get his offense, but the defense is going to be where he pays dividends for the Rockets, I believe. Keegan Murray of the Sacramento Kings, he's been putting on a show the whole summer league long. Um, yeah. He was a wild card when Sacramento picked him in, in fourth overall. But he's got a really high basketball IQ, and he averaged 23.3 points a game in the summer league. Um, so that's like crazy. And uh, that's the most scoring average since Lillard did it. Damian Lillard did it back in 2012 at 26.5 when he was a rookie. Yeah, and, he and did. Finally, yeah. uh, Jaden Ivey um, of the Detroit Pistons. He had uh, 20.6 rebounds and 6 assists in his debut and 11 more points that came two days later. Pistons coach Dwayne Casey uh, raved post-draft about Ivy's speed, while summer teammates were impressed with his fit and demeanor. So you got some rookies doing some stuff. We'll see how it all pans out uh, in their NBA careers. But it sounds like all of them got to rest up and eat up a little bit, man, because the game is bigger, quicker, and faster on that next level. And they'll get there, and they'll get there you know. They'll get there. They'll get there. But, you know, <clears throat> I forgot to tell you what I found so fascinating. I really sat down and watched for the first time was the ML, the Major League Baseball draft. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I That's what you call monotony right there, there, brother. Pardon me? That's what you call monotony. Actually, it was kind of cool because you got to see, like, all right. We grew up watching like Matt Holiday. Matt Holiday's son was the number one pick. Then you remember the pitcher Rocker? Rocker's son was a pick. Then you have John pick. Rocker? You mean Jason, yes. a racist John Rocker from the Braves? Yes. Oh my God. They let, his, had, and then, I mean, they let his progeny in the league? Sorry? You are, they let his progeny in the league? I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't know if you want to say, you know, I don't, he may not even have a relationship with his father. I don't know. All I know is I remember the utter vi visceral and racial, you know, but guess what? comments and, 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 and innuendos his dad made years ago. He will not, he will not survive in the, in, in the major league baseball if he's a racist. Because that, that is, yeah. that's one of the more diversified leagues in it, the world. Around, you got it. Okay. And they and police that's themselves. Between that, the Premier Soccer League. You didn't see how your boy Anderson from the White Sox, who you reflect earlier on in the year when, when the third base coach from another team was trying to get into it with him in the dugout? And he, yeah, made, and he, yeah, made, a com yeah, he yeah. made a comment. He said, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't refer to me as Jackie, as in Jackie Robinson. Because you're making that yes. as an innuendo. Yeah. You're referring to me being African-American. You're making a racial insult. Exactly. Exactly. And, they got, and, they, and they actually, they got, it, they, got, they got into it. And um, they were threatening to send him back down the year to show them some star things. Well, I, I'm going to see, like I say, baseball, we talked about it earlier, got a lot of, lot of stuff on the horizon in the offseason. I think the NBA is still going to have a few more moves made before they get back to work. And before you know it, October is October's right around the corner when you look at it. Right here. Well, is it on, on the um, Las Vegas Raiders in the training camp as of today, veterans in today? I just wanted to tell you, man. And now we can actually say that the water has broken officially on the 2022 NFL season because the Raiders are in training camp. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, the Super. Cowboys will be there by the weekend or early into next week. 
so you know. Definitely looking forward to the best time of the year starting in short order. And that is the NFL season. It's the best. Absolute best. It always is. It always is. It always is. Uh, unfortunately, we're still dealing with the, with the sports doldrums right now. No Major League Baseball, oh, night post all star game. Maybe get your WNBA yeah. game. That's about it. Hopefully, you find I mean, some, some boxing matches tonight? somewhere. I don't even think any WNBA games tonight? No, I'm just saying, just due to the climate right now in the world of sports, with, with a lot of teams being in the off season and football there's getting ready to start, nothing. there's nothing to watch. Like, absolutely nothing. Nothing to watch. They had the, the, the Chicago Sky and the Storm already played. There's nothing to watch tonight. Well, there is something for you to watch. You can watch that Netflix special, The Captain. All about the probably life and times watching, of, of I Derek probably Jeter. Watching that. I probably end up watching that. With your, with your Dodger jersey on, probably. No, 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 no. I won't do that. I won't do that. <laughs> I always <laughs> respect you, though. I always like Jeter. Yes, you would. I like a Rod, too. I like saying respect. You respect him. Anyway, yeah. uh, they earlier Texas chimed in and said World Track and Field is on tonight. So you can check out World Track and Field. You can watch Sean A and the crew run. How about that? Oh, yes, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you, Texter. Oh, now, you've given, now you've given Earl something to do. Big fan of my zoo crew. You and your dolphins go jump in a pond, okay? And take Pearly with you because he's a dolphin too. Music's wait, playing. Wait, wait, hold on. Music's playing. Why are you giving me this? Go, go ahead. Why? Go ahead. Are you giving me Give, give the gentleman a hard time. Because he's a dolphin and we used to work together at the zoo and he used to give me a hard time for the dolphins back in the day. What did he say to you that's not for you to give him a hard time? He said, the Cowboys suck, go Dolphins, big up Earl the Pearl. Hey, that's my brother. That's my brother. That's making sure. That's the big fan do scheme, man. After you deliver the message and you can tell me jump in the lake or whatever. Yeah, the two of y'all can jump in the lake. That's where dolphins belong in the water. Go jump in the lake. Don't worry. Don't worry. We can see. All right. Live. But I appreciate you. I appreciate you chiming in as always, Pearly. Good stuff. And big up to everybody who chimed in earlier today as well. And my guest, Casarina McKinney from Brief, Chris um, Wilkie from uh, Waterkeepers, and of course, you know, Mr. Joseph Dalva for chiming in, and everybody who contributed on the text and on the phone calls. Good stuff all show long. Pearly, appreciate you. We'll do it again tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday, people. We'll see you mañana. Be good, Bahamas. And if you can't be good, be good at it. Be going. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place.